following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The Hebraic Satanic Myth Much has been uh, talking about in relation with Satan which uh, most uh, of people in the Christian world in Judaism as well and uh, Muslims associate with Lucifer and uh, we have to explain in this lecture that uh, they are two different things even though relate to the same force and uh, to study this uh, uh, topic is very important in order to settle our minds and to understand that uh, these uh, archetypes related with Lucifer and Satan are within each one of us. And uh, how this... Uh, uh, forces relate with a Hebrew uh, myth. We find, of course, uh, this satanic myth in many other religions. <coughs> but uh, this lecture relates to Kabbalah, to the tree of life, alchemy, the tree of knowledge, in the Hebraic uh, pantheon in order for us to understand, because uh, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam is what uh, most of the, what the people know in this day and age, in the Western world. So, when we inquire about the meaning of the word Satan, we find that it means the adversary, adversary, the contrary, the opposite. And of course, uh, when we uh, study this opposite, we uh, find that uh, relates to what we call darkness and light. And uh, many people, of course, think that this name, Satan, is just written in certain books of the Bible, where you find literally the name Satan, which is written with three letters. The first is the letter Shin, which uh, in many lectures uh, we told you means fire. Or is a symbol of fire. 
then the letter Tav. Or, uh, uh, excuse me, the letter Tet. I said Tav because uh, in Hebrew you find two uh, T's. The letter Tet and the letter Tav. Both of them sounds T. Hmm? <coughs> But the letter Tet, of course, as we explain in the Hebrew alphabet, relates to the serpent. It's a symbol of the serpent. It's the ninth letter that relates to the Sefirah Yesod, which many times we explain relates to the sexual force. And the letter Tav, which is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, is that letter that uh, always uh, uh, relates to the Sephira Malkut, which is below the Sephira Yesod. So, actually, the word Malkut ends with Tav. But here, we find that the word Satan is written with Shin, Tet, and what we call Final noon, which is that letter N that in Hebrew is written as a half circle or half a square, we will say. Half a square is the letter Nun. But when you write it at the end of any word and then you don't write the circle but just prolong the line down, it's called final noon. So this is how you write Satan in Hebrew. The letters that you see there, of course, explains a lot to those who know about the meaning of the letters. But, uh, so this word, of course, is mainly found uh, in this book uh, uh, called the book of Job in the last, uh, uh, I mean, in the Old Testament, in the Bible. When the Satan and Jehovah are acting together in agreement in order to test Job. You can read the, the book, it's a very long book. But he explains very well how Jehovah is commanding Satan to do his job against Job. But this sat Satan... Of Satan uh, is also named the Prince of Darkness. And in the New Testament, Master Jesus called uh, Satan the Prince of this world. Of course, he states that uh, he is the father of lying. <coughs> That everything that he says is against the truth. So he is, of course, always denying the truth. He's the opposite, in other words. A simple symbol, in order to show uh, the light and the darkness, or that which is above and that which is below, is in the start of uh, Solomon, or the start of David which is the six-pointed star. And when you find two triangles, the first triangle is always related with the first three sephiroth of the tree of life, which are Keter, Chochmah, and Bina. And that in Christianity is called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, and Hinduism. And below this triangle, or united with this, we have an upside down triangle, which forms, of course, the six pointed star, star of David. And that's a symbol that shows that the opposite of the light is really the darkness, which is in one hole. People think that this uh, darkness 
was uh, uh, created after the light was created. But we go, if we go back in time, <coughs> according to the Hebrew scriptures, we find that really what we call darkness is before that that we call light. Of course, this Satan or Prince of Darkness, or the symbol of it, goes back not only uh, in us, but in time into the creation of the cosmos. It's not a person, but a force that belongs to the light. You see, in Kabbalah, we study three aspects that we call the absolute, which are these three forces which are beyond the first triangle that we are talking about, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's called in Hebrew, Ein, the first aspect, Ein Sof, the second aspect, and Ein Sof Or. The third aspect. So this or or the third aspect means light in Hebrew. It's written with Aleph, Vav, and Resh. You uh, read it in English, Aur, but you pronounce it, pronounce it or. That's light. So that is the third aspect of the absolute. The third aspect means that the first is the Ein Sof, the, the Ein, and the second is the Ein Sof, as many times we explain in the lectures. And when we talk about the Ein or the Ein Sof, we call, uh, or, or we relate to it as eternal darkness. But in order to explain it better, we say it is abstract light or uncreated light a type of light that if we want to see it we will see only darkness because we don't have the proper sight in order to see that light therefore it's called darkness but it's darkness for us but it's pure light for the Paramartha Satyas, which are the inhabitants which live within the bosom of the darkness, which is light, uncreated light. An example of one of those Paramartha Satyas is Master Jesus of Nazareth. He is an, inha in, in, an inhabitant of that uncreated light, which is the Ain, and is translated as nothingness. Well, when you read the Bible from the very beginning, it explains there that that darkness is from which the light emerged. It says in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was uh, empty and void. And darkness was upon the face of the abyss. You see there? The fir very first words of the book of Genesis is telling us that darkness is there before the light. It says, and darkness was upon the face of the abyss, and the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. So in the beginning we see there that, that in Hebrew is called Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God, was moving in the waters of the beginning, but everything was in darkness. 
And after that it is written, And Elohim said, Let there be light. And the light was. So here we see very clear that first is the, light, uh, the darkness and then is the light. And from the darkness, the light is emerging. <coughs> That's why it says that Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And he called the darkness night. And the light he called day. So that night, the prince of the night of the darkness, we call Satan, of course, is a force, an entity that exists inside of us and outside of us. In the universe, of course, is the creator of that light. But it's the opposite. This is why it is represented in many uh, great scriptures. Like the one that denied the light. But is not denying the light, the uncreated light. Because Satan itself is a son, a child of the darkness. Which is the uncreated light. And this is what we have to understand. While the light that emerges from it is the light that we see here in all dimensions. But it's the same light that emerges from the Ain, that is called the Abyss. When you think in Abyss, what do you think? You think uh, something with no bottom, right? Bottomless Abyss. And this is precisely, in this sense, the absolute, that we call the abstract, absolute space, the aim, the nothingness. It's a bottomless abyss of darkness for us, but it's uncreated light. And from there emerges, or emerges the light that we call or. But then the darkness again expresses itself in the universe, and from it, the light emerges again. If we say that that darkness is fire, we won't commit a mistake. A type of fire. That is not the fire that we find in this three-dimensional world. We call it abstract fire. Which is mother, father. And of course... As the book of Genesis explains, after the Elohim created the light from the darkness, <coughs> he continues dividing, he says, he divided the, the, the light from the darkness. When you, when you are dividing something, is because you are taking out, putting it the other side. This is how you divide, by taking from it, what is light, and living there, which is darkness. Uh -huh. So, in other words, the light that we see here in this physical world is nothing but an unfoldment of another light that for us is darkness, for our comprehension. So, that is precisely what uh, we call the two opposites in the very abstract manner in the beginning of the universe what the Bible called Bereshit in the beginning or as John in the book of uh, in his gospel explains it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the Word was God. This is the beginning with God. Everything was made by Him. And everything that exists, that is made, was not made without Him. And then he adds, 
and in him is life. And the life is the light of men. And this light shines in the darkness. You see, the light shines in the darkness. It means that if the light wants to shine, it needs the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. But this is taking that from this point of view. We said that this prince of darkness, this Satan, rejects the light or creates the light. This is a battle of dark and light, of darkness and light, that is written in many books. So, Satan, the opposite, unfolds in many parts, as the Bible exp explains in the book of Genesis. When the first day of Genesis is done, and then Moses wrote, and the evening and the morning was one day, the first day. They accomplished one day. But who accomplished that day? The evening, which is the darkness. Because the evening is the, when the light is gone. And the day is when the light is rising. So it says, and the evening and the morning, the expression of the light, were one day. You see? That everything that is being done there by the light is because of the darkness. And that's why it says in the second day. And the evening and the morning was the second day. And after that, the two forces start working in the third day, in the fourth day, in the fifth day. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day, the fifth day. So you see here, the two forces always working in harmony. So in other words, as we say, the upper triangle working with the lower triangle. That's why Eliphaz Levi, this great Kabbalist, shows God in the upper triangle and Satan in the lower triangle. As a reflection of the force, of the same force. So if we talk about Satan, we have to talk about God too. In other words, the opposite or the lower part of God is that what we call Satan. That in the absolute is the upper part. That's why the Master Samael on the old wrote in the book of Kabbalah. If Elohim or the Logos, created the universe is because the devil gave him liberty to do it. If you read this and do not understand Kabbalah, you might think that he's talking about a certain demon. No. The devil is Satan. This is darkness. Nor if Elohim, which in the beginning says, in the beginning Elohim created the heaven and the earth. If he did it, it's because the darkness gave him liberty to do it. Because that which is the light, which is Elohim, emerges from the darkness of the absolute. That is what the Satanists were teaching in the Middle Ages. Of course, but this symbol, this Satan, unfolds in many parts, you know. And is that force against we have to fight. Because everything that is written in the book of Genesis, in the evening, in the morning, one day, etc., these two forces, what they want to create is a great being. They want to create a being which is like them. 
powerful like them. And that's why when we said like them, it comes into my mind the word Tob and Ra. Hmm? Good and evil is what is translated. But here the word evil it doesn't go. If we translate Tob and Ra like good and the opposite of good will be better. Right? Good and no good. Yes and no. Because if you want to affirm something, you have to see the opposite for there. You say yes. But if the no is not there, you cannot affirm anything. And there is no darkness, how you are going to affirm the light? That is the pure wisdom of the... Gnostic Satanists that existed in the Middle Ages. And that because of they didn't understand them, they were burned alive in the Inquisition. <coughs> From there comes this beautiful wisdom. And uh, this light and darkness also are symbolized as the upper triangle, the male. And the lower triangle, the female. And we always say also in relation with the Star of David. The upper triangle is the phallus and the two testicles. The phallus represented by Keter. The two testicles by Chochmah and Binah. And of course, in the woman... The lower triangle is upside down because her ovaries are above. We, the men, we have the testicles below, but the woman has the ovaries above, and below is the uterus, which is the upside down triangle. And that's why this upside down triangle is represented by a woman. And that's why the book of Genesis explains in a very cryptic manner how Satan works through the woman in order to make the upper triangle to fall you see the two opposite forces there always working in the higher like in the lower but of course in the Elohim in the gods these two forces are in equilibrium that's why they are gods they said they are no good and evil. We will say because they know good and no good. They are perfect. Otherwise they can be Elohim, gods. In order to enter into the bosom of the Ain, which is the abstract universal cosmic father. The element that needs to penetrate there has to be in balance. The two forces that we call good and evil. Good or and not good. Otherwise, cannot penetrate there. That equilibrium is very difficult to acquire. Especially we are here. Because we need to acquire that equilibrium in order to be like the gods. That the gods are within themselves are represented with that star of David. That's why when somebody is a self-realized monad, that monad that represents in the inner being has a ring with the star of David in his right hand. That symbolizes that he is in equilibrium with the two forces. God and Satan in himself it is written that those Elohim never dare to touch with the left hand that ring. Because the one that touch, touch their, that ring, which sim symbolizes their self-realization, lose that ring. You see, we talk many times about the left side here, which is Zain many times, which is Eve. To touch that, we say that the sense of touch is in relation with sex. 
because the organ which is the more sensitive in relation with the sense of touch is the sexual organ. So you said, don't dare to touch that finger with your left hand is equal as do not eat from the fruit of the tree of good and evil. Because the day that you eat from it, you will die and you will lose your immortality. So see, this is how is, everything is hidden in symbols. <coughs> and this is how we need to read. Anyhow, uh, what this light and darkness wants to create is other beings alike. And that's the whole thing. The whole battle in the universe. And that's why you read this in the book of Genesis that says, e Elohim said, let us make Adam in our image after our likeness. You see? The image is the first triangle. The likeness is the lower triangle. Our image is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The likeness is the negative aspect of those three aspects represented in the female. As we explain here. That is the likeness. Hmm? The two forces there. Light and darkness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fall of the air. And over the cattle. And over the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You see? Let them have dominion. Them, because they are made into the same image. According to the myth that you read in many parts, in many books, instead of Adam, they call this image and likeness Lucifer. Luci from Lux. Light in Latin. And fair fire or carrier of the light. If you said, who is this fire, fair or carrier, Lucifer, Lucif, Lucif, Lucifugus, who is this carrier of the light? Well, as we were explaining from the beginning, the one that is carrying the light is the darkness. Because from the darkness come, come the light. So that's why this Lucifer is the carrier of the light. It's the darkness. But it's created. According to, in this case. According to the likeness of Elohim. And according to his image. But here it's called Adam. That's why the Sohar describes that when Adam was created, he was created androgynous. And the light that was showing through Adam was so beautiful. Because all the light and the darkness, which is the uncreated light, was showing through him. You know that story of Lucifer as well. It was the most beautiful angel created in the beginning. And then it, it says that Lucifer rebelled against the Elohim, against God. Because he wanted to be like him. Isn't, it, isn't that the, what the, the myth tell us? That Lucifer wanted to be like God. And that's why he was kicked out of Shamayim, which is heaven in Hebrew. And Shamajim is what we call the Upper Eden. Is not perhaps that Adam wanted to be like God, knowing good and evil? And this is why he was kicked out from Shamajim, the Upper Eden as well, to the ground. So you see that this light that we call here Lucifer 
in this aspect on unfoldment was within that creature that we call Adam. And because he wanted to be like God, he was kicked out because he couldn't do it. <coughs> so you see that? You see the analogy there? The similitude of the two elements? That's why it says there that Elohim says, let command the cattle, the fish of the ocean, the birds of the air, the creeping creature, everything in the earth, which is Malkut. In other words, Adam was a prince of this world. The king, it says the Bible, not prince, king of nature. But when he fell, of course, now he's a prince. <laughs> but he was a king. Right? He says, as a man, he's a king of nature. That was Adam. Androgynous. And why? Because this androgenism is symbolized in the letter Shin, which is fire which is the first letter I said, with which you write, Satan. But let me tell you something, and before I forget, how the Hebrew word hides many things. If you put the letter Tet here, I mean the letter Tav, instead of the letter Tet, and then you will write the same, Satan, you can say the same thing, Satan or Shatan. But with Tet is the adversary. But with Tav, which is a letter like this, the letter Tav, this is how you write Tav, it says in the same way, Satan. That means urine. The point here is very clear. Urine is Satan with Tav. And you urine through your sexual organ. We are pointing all with the same thing. Because when we talk Satan, we point to the sexual organ, Yesod. And to urinate is Satan with Tav. But if you take the end out of the word, and you just leave the word Shin and Tav, you have the third son of Saddam and Eve, Set. Which in another lecture, somebody asked me, what does the word set mean in Hebrew? And uh, I forgot, but now I remember. It means buttocks. You know? So it means the back part. And of course, in there, you find the coccyx. But the fire of Shin rises because of Tav, which is a cross, which symbolizes Malkut. Anyhow, continue reading with what the book of Genesis says. So Elohim created Adam in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. Hmm? So here again, the start of David, male and female, he created Adam. I mean, a perfect androgynous into his own image. Now tell me, if you want to describe Elohim or God, in other words, you will be so beautiful, I would describe them as a light shining with a strength. And if God is making somebody into his own image, into his own likeness, that one will shine as well. Will be very bright. And if we call him in Latin, Lucifer, well, we say this is the translation of Adam, which is a Hebrew word for the primordial man. Adam. The primordial man. But now we are talking in Latin. 
and we call him Lucifer, because Lucifer is a Latin word, it's not a Hebrew word. But if we want to say it in Hebrew, we call the glorified one, the glorious one, Adam, that was controlling the earth, because God is written there in the, in the book of Genesis. God said to Adam, you now command the earth. You are the king of nature. I gave it to you in the Garden of Eden. So, and Elohim blessed them. <coughs> this male female was blessed. And Elohim said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. These creatures that were created there were, of course, <coughs> going to multiply. Remember that they were androgynous, having in themselves the two forces, male and female. And they were multiplying or giving fruit to, their, to, their, or to two forces. So when the, we said in other lectures, we said multiply in Hebrew is rabbah, which means also is rabbi or rabbi, which means master. You see? Be fruitful and be a master of what I am giving to you. That will be the translation. Develop everything that I am giving to you, your archetypes, and master that in the earth. Of course, this Lucifer of Adam, as we call him, is there. And subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fall of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. And Elohim said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fall of the earth, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, where there is life. And I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And now you see the end of this, of this, it says, And the evening and the sun of the morning were the sixth day. Because Lucifer is called the sun of the morning. The child of the morning. Right? But really, Adam or Lucifer is a child of the evening and the morning. The superior forces... This is how the book of Genesis describes how Adam is created from the beginning and all those these days until the sixth day. Because this is the very end of the first chapter <coughs> when man is created. It's called Adam. But of course, in Latin I said, it's Lucifer, created there. Many Kabbalists state that those birds... That is written that are, that, are, that are commanded by Adam are angels of Shamajim. Because it says, the book of Genesis says, and command the birds of the air. But the reality is, it says, and command the angels of Shamajim, which is heaven. And that's why it is written that Adam, the one that was created at that time, was even above the angels commanded the angels. Which angels are we talking here? Well, there are many types of angels. The monads from the lower kingdom and those other monads that are in nirvana, masters of the spiral. Because the Adam created into the image of God that we call Lucifer, in Gnosticism we call it Christus Lucifer. Using the word Christus as Christ from Greek, because it's a Greek word. 
the anointed one, the Messiah, is in Hebrew. But Adam was Christus Lucifer, the one that was controlling the earth and heaven. The complete 100% developed Bodhisattva, which is that monad that takes the direct path and self realizes himself to the point that returns into the absolute. An example of one of those beings is Master Jesus. Another example is Moses, or Mohammed, or Abraham, <coughs> many other those masters of the past. That reached that level of Christus Lucifer, Adam, into the image of God. Of course, here, that's why... Uh, when we read the Bible, we read the book of uh, Isaiah. When he described this Christus Lucifer, the son of the evening and the morning, as the book of Genesis describes it. And of course, you know the story of the Bible that uh, Adam fell into sin. Because he was trying to be very uh, beautiful or more perfect as God created him. He wanted to reach higher levels of understanding. And because he couldn't control the darkness, his wife or his counterpart, he fell. And that's why Isaiah wrote this. How are that fallen from Shamayim, which is the upper Eden, O glorified one? Of course, in the Bible, they said, O Lucifer. But we said glorified one because that is the right translation from Hebrew. If you want to translate that into Latin, then we can say Lucifer. But remember that this is something different. This is the same Adam. He says, Son of the evening and the morning, the sixth day, how art thou cut down to the ground? That ground is Adama. It's called in Hebrew Adama, the ground. The opposite of Adam is Adama, the earth. Which did is weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into Shamayim, into heaven, the upper Eden. I will exalt my throne. What is the throne of God? How do we, or how any being created into the image of God, exalt himself more? In the Gnostic lectures, we explain unto you that the throne of God is the spinal medulla. In it, we have the fire of Shekinah. Hmm? That's why it's called the glorified one. Why are we glorified one? Or how are those beings glorified ones? Because the glory of God is in the spinal medulla. That glory of God in Hebrew or in Aramaic is called Shekinah. And that Shekinah is written with Shin. Shekinah is fire. The glory of God. The female aspect of God rising in the spinal column. And protruding on the top of the head. As a tongue of fire. <clears throat> now, he says, I will exalt my throne, meaning I will increase the light, in other words, which is in my spinal column, which in Sanskrit is called Kundalini. I will increase the fire of Kundalini, 
the light of my Divine Mother in my spinal column in order to be more enlightened. This is what it says there in simple words. And I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. What is the mount of the congregation in the physical body of that beautiful androgynous? The mount is here. Of the congregation. The mount of the skulls as well if you want. The mount of Sinai if you want to. The pineal gland. That's the mount. Because with the pineal gland... We control the multitudes. The pineal gland has a force to be in control with the forces of the mental plane. So the mount of the congregation is here. And in the pineal gland, we have the atom of the Holy Spirit, which is called Bina. That's why Isaiah says, I will exalt, I, I will sit also upon the mount of the, uh, the congregation, which is a pineal gland. I will sit is the soul. I mean, the, the seat of the soul is the pineal gland. This is how the, here, in the pineal gland where we have uh, the seat of the soul. In the size of the north. When you know Kabbalah, what is the north? Well, you have the tree of life here. East is called Tifereth. That is the east, because here we have the, the sun. Tifereth is symbolized by the sun. S-U-N, the sun. So when you said east of Eden, means the light that is going up to Tifereth and further to the ends of Or. Remember that or means light. So the east or the light that we have to transmute has to rise to Tifereth, even to Keter, and beyond to that abstract sun that we call the astral sun, the solar force, the absolute abstract solar force. Which is in the seventh dimension. That is what in Kabbalah is called East. That's why when you said, where is the East in the tree of life? It got from Yesod up to the ends of Or. And where is West? Well, West is Malkut, the planet Earth. When the sun sets. What do you mean the sun sets? The solar light sets when you draw the ray of creation, descending from the ends of four down, is going like a lightning, go to Malkut. That is where the sun sets, or in other words, where all the forces of the universe set. In our physical body and in the earth. That's why it's called the West. Is when the sun sets. And thank goodness we have a physical body. All the light of the universe sets here in the physical body. But it's only up to us to rise that light through our sexual behavior in order to make the morning, because we are the evening. The evening contains the fire, which is the west. When the sun sets in the west, what happens? What, what comes after that? Darkness. So we are darkness. But in this darkness is the charcoal, which has the fire, half the light. All in us depends to take that light from this darkness, from which, which is the west, the earth, and to rise it up to the ends of all. So the south is called Chochma, the side, the right side of the tree of life. That's the south. And the north is Bina. As it says. South to the right of the tree of life. 
and the north to the left of the tree of life. So when you said north, you are talking about Bina. Now, Bina, we repeat, is the Holy Spirit. It's Shiva. And we have an atom of the Holy Spirit in the pineal gland. So when we are reading here that we will sit on the mount of the congregation to the size of the north, we're talking about Bina here. Again, no? It's very explicit. The mount is here and the north is here because we have an atom of the Holy Spirit there. In order to exalt myself more, I have to rise that light. Because the pineal gland is the gland related with the chakra Sahasrara in Sanskrit. And we talk about many, many lectures about that chakra. And that chakra is related with Keter, Bina, Chokma, and even with the ends of R. Is that chakra that connects us to heaven. Mm -hmm. When we know the doctrine, this is how we have to exalt ourselves, to glorify ourselves in that way, to rise the light to the size of the north, Bina, the Holy Spirit. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and we be, I will be like the Most High. Who is the Most High? Well, the most high, of course, is Keter in the tree of life. But beyond him is the Ain. That's the most high. The Ain Saf. Oh, as it's written there in that song of uh, the men of La Mancha. I will follow the star. That star is the Ain Saf. No matter how hard it will be. But that is our task. To follow the star. Well, this is the longing of all of us, right? This is what we want. And this is what Adam wanted at that time to exalt himself more. Because God, his all, was so beautiful, he wanted to be more. To have more of him within himself. And then Isaiah says, Yet, Thou shalt be brought down to Gehenom. Gehenom in English means hell. To the size of the pit. The pit is here. You know? Because from here it's trying to go up again, but it's going down to Glee Path, in other words. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, or you, in other words, saying, is this Adam? Or you want in Lucifer, is it in Latin, is this Lucifer? The ish, the fire, that made the earth to tremble, that did shake Malkut. In the Bible says that this shake the nations or the kingdoms, in other words. But in Hebrew it's called Malkut. Malkut is the earth. Because remember that in the beginning God said, command the earth. Right? So now he, Isaiah says, is this the one that was commanding the earth? Well, he was sank into Klippoth because he ate from the fruit that he shouldn't eat. And uh, <coughs> as you said, is this Adam? Is this Ish? So you see how this verse of Isaiah is connected with the same thing? When you know alchemy and Kabbalah, you know very well that Adam is the same Lucifer that was made in the beginning beautiful. But now, here, of course, Satan is the one that enters into activity, which is the adversary. But it's in him too, because he's in equilibrium, you see. 
This Christus Lucifer that we are talking here, or the Adam of the book of Genesis, is in equilibrium. His male-female aspects are not uh, this, this equilibrated. Because they are following. But of course, in order for, as we explain in the lectures, in order for us to exalt ourselves more in the level that we are, there has to be division of sexes. Because in any moment that wants to exalt and to be like God, like God, remember, not to be a God. This is different. To be a God is not possible. To be like God is possible. Hmm? This is precisely what we have because when you read that Adam was made into his image according to his likeness, it doesn't mean that Adam is a God like the Father. It's something like. Hmm? This is what we have to understand. So here we are. And that's why Jesus of Nazareth said, Strive to be perfect, as your Father who is in heaven is perfect. In other words, we'll say, Make light if he is shiny, as your Father who is in heaven is a shiny angel. So be you like, be, be you like him. Shine your light in you. But of course, we need the assistance of the lower forces and to know about how in order to do it. In order for us to create light, to be enlightened, we need to know how to take that light from the darkness. In other words, we need Satan in order to make the light. And in order to show you, and not to be scared of this, because the same Jesus had that light because of Satan. It is written. In the very beginning of the book of Matthew. And Jesus, <coughs> when he was baptized, went up straight out of the water, and lo, the heavens, Shamajim, were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, the Holy Spirit, which is called Bina. Up from the sides of the north, which is Bina, heaven, Bina land, and lightning upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven, Shamajim again, a voice saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This is written at the very end of Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, 17. And in the beginning of the next one, it says very clear there, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The same Spirit that enters into him, and he says, this is my beloved Son, to him into the wilderness in order to be tested by Satan or by the devil. And he is being tested there. But how was this devil testing him? How was Satan testing him? Well, in the many pictures that you read there or you see in, in, in graphics, you see the devil outside telling him in the ear, do this, do that, or give me this, right? No. That devil is not outside of him. He's inside of him. It's Satan. is the opposite of God. And that Satan is inside of each one of us. When you are tempted, when you are suggested to do something, 
You don't hear any voice outside of you. It's from inside that you are tempted. Hmm? And all the things that we do, evil things, come from inside. So when Jesus is taken by the spirit that he is inside of him, or you think that that spirit that entered into him is outside of him, or is inside of him? He's inside of him. But that spirit has his counterpart, because it's the start of David. His counterpart is the shadow, is Satan. He says, now we have to make light in this being in which we are incarnated. Let us take him to the wilderness, into life, of course. And for him to make light from the darkness. That's why Master Samael Onveor says, Temptation is fire. We will say, and that fire is dark fire. And if we triumph over that temptation, we make light. Hmm? It's easy. Because this is how God made the universe from the darkness. We want to imitate him. We want to be shiny as he. Well, and then we had to defeat the darkness. The darkness would tempt us. Because the light, is, the darkness tempt us in order to show. Oh, you want to have light? You meant you want to have virtues. Because God is virtuous. And you are a sinner. You want to be like God? Create virtues. You don't know how? Let me show you the opposite of that virtue that you had to build. But for that, I had to tempt you. In the temptation, you see the lust, the anger, the pride that you have. And then you will see that there is darkness. Within that is light. If you comprehend, if you understand that darkness, comprehension will be light within you. And then you will shine in the sides of the north, the pineal gland. Because virtue is tested in the fire. But if we are tested, if we are tempted, and we are defeated, then we are not creating virtues. We are not creating light. We are just sink into the mud. We live in the darkness. And this is precisely what happened. When God put the man and divided the sexes in Eden, what happened after that when the sexes were divided? Darkness came through Eve because belongs to him, the lower triangle. Right? And through Eve, Satan starts doing his job. So here he wants more. I mean, this Christus Lucifer wants more light to be like you. Okay, let's see if he can take the light out of the darkness. And he starts the temptation through the woman. And here we have to understand that within each one of us, when we are not fallen, when we are standing with the light within, we have the letter Shin inside. That letter Shin is represented by the central column and the right and the left column. This is how you see the letter Shin of fire. Beginning with the Esod here. This is how you find the letter Shin. That's why when we talk about the letter Shin, we are saying, we're talking about the tree of life, the spinal column. The Carusos of Mercury. That is what we call the three serpents. The two serpents that are entwined around the carusius or the spinal medulla. And the other is the Shekinah, which is in the center. The glory of God is in the spinal column. <coughs> when that glory of God is shining there, and the two serpents are around, entwined around that carusius, Behold, Christus Lucifer, very well balanced. Because the three lights that represents the three primary forces are in him in equilibrium, balanced. But then, with this division of sexes, and then the shadow comes. 
through the female aspect, which is always the left. We will explain in other lectures. We explain that. Then, it is written, Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Jehovah Elohim had made. Of course, that is that serpent, which is the female aspect, which has access to the light and to the darkness. And he approaches the sexual organ, the female. He says, uh, so God said unto you that you don't have to eat from the tree of the garden. Is what he said. And then the woman said, well, he said, don't eat from that. Don't even touch it. Because you will die. Well, says Satan, let me tell you, you will die. Of course, he didn't say it if you don't eat it. Hmm? You won't die. But if you eat from it in the way that we know now, which is sexual transmutation, if you take the sexual union, but you don't spill the water, then the light will rise more and you will be enlightened. That's the right answer, right? The same thing. But the woman took from the fruit and fornicated. Spill the fire. When that happened, of course, you know, they discover that they were without the light. The light of Shekinah that was rising, which is called Kundalini, in their spinal column, went off. Completely out. Because that light is sustained by the two polarities. The two polarities are male-female, which in the Bible are called Ish and Isha. And we said Ish is the male aspect of the fire. Isha is the female aspect of the fire. That is Shin. When these two polarities are united in Yesod, in the sexual act, in other words, then Shekinah rises in the spinal column. The glory of God which is a kundalini. But if in the sexual act, ignoring that the fuel of that light is the oil, which is called shemen in Hebrew, shemen, oil, the semen, in other words, if you spill it, then there is no light. The lamp of Aladdin goes out. And then Shekinah disappears from the spinal column and there is no more glory that being that was glorious his glory disappears because the glory of God is his wife the Shekinah that rises in the spinal column this is how in the Bible you find that men male is called Ish and female Isha because related to the two polarities Male and female of the fire. In Shatan, of course, is that force that is also fire that acts to the woman in Tet, the world of Yesod, which is sex. Well, you know the serpent says, well, if you know how to eat from that tree, you will be like God's knowing good and evil. We know that. If we know how to eat like the gods from that tree, we will be like them, knowing good and evil, more exalted. But the problem was that uh, uh, those uh, creatures in the past, that we call Adam and Eve, who is not only one man and one woman, but represents a whole race, the Lemurian race, committed the mistake of performing the sexual act out of the temples, and when they did it in their homes, without guidance, they fornicated like the beasts. And it's written like any beast 
in the earth, is born, grow up, grow old, and die. Because they fornicate. But the Adam, or the androgynous of uh, the Bible, that Lucifer, Christus Lucifer, was not a fornicator. It was a chaste. That's why the glory of God was in his spinal column, Shekinah. And that's why it's written. <coughs> that when the, uh, they were already fallen because they fornicated, they didn't use the sexual act in the right way, they heard the voice of God in the garden. When you said the voice of God in the garden, you might think, is he talking? In Kabbalah, in alchemy, the voice of God is when you touch your palate to your, the roof of your mouth and pronounce a sound like the letter He in other words. He said, Yod He, Vav He. That is the second name of God. But the sound of the He is like that. Touching your palate and the roof of your nose. That's the voice of God. It's a female aspect, in other words. The voice of God is a female aspect related with Shekinah. And that's why when they committed the mistake of fornicating, it is written there, and they heard. That is inside because the faculty of hearing, of listening, is related with the spinal column. The letter Vav is related with hearing. And we talked to you and told you about that in other lectures. So when you said, and they heard the voice of God, meaning that through the spinal column, they heard the voice of Elohim. The female aspect of God there, after the fornication like this, no longer there. And, says the main aspect, where is your, where is your female aspect, your light? Where is the glory? My glory, where is it? Where art thou? It is written in simple words. Where art thou? That thou is that Meaning, where is your Shekinah? Disappeared. Oh, he says, I was naked and I hide myself. How do you know that you are naked? Did you eat from the fruit? I mean, that light disappeared. And he says, and I hide among the trees of the garden. Which trees? Adam and Eve were naked and hiding. What trees we are talking here? There were only these two main trees. Of course, there are many other trees, symbol of. But here we are talking about the tree of life and the tree of good and evil, which are in the midst of the garden. Okay? Which means they are entwined in the spinal column. So they hide there, one side and the other side. When they heard the voice of God in the middle, it was there. There is no there. How do you know that you are naked? Do you try to eat from the fruit that I told you do not eat? But you ate it like the beasts and that's why you are now naked. And that's why he goes into the serpent. What serpent? The serpent which is in the left. Which is related with sex. And says, now you will, you will eat dust from the ground. What is the ground? The ground is Malkut. Dust you will eat all the days of your life. What do you think is that? When you hear that statement, 
that the serpent will eat dust all the days of its life. In order to understand that, we go into the next sentence when God said to Adam, because you are dust, and to the dust you will return, because you were taken out of the ground. The ground is Malkut. In other words, the fallen serpent that is a fornicator is eating us. He feeds of us. We, we created from the dust of the earth. We are from the dust of the earth. And to the dust we will return. And the serpent said, you will eat dust all the days of your life. In other words, that serpent is inside of us. The fallen serpent is not outside. How many people think, oh, it's Satan. Yeah, outside. Tempted Adam and Eve, that beautiful couple, long time ago. And Satan is outside trying to make us sin. No. Satan is inside of us all the time. And that fallen serpent, which makes the tail of Satan in us. And feed itself from us. Because we are dust of the earth. And it is written that God said, and you will eat dust all the day of your life. Hmm? So he is inside of us. And we are looking for Satan outside. Meanwhile, everybody carries it inside. We said in other lectures that when that happened, then Adam and Eve had their first son. And that first son was Cain. And we explained that Cain means nest. And we said that the solar light makes a nest in us, and that is Cain. And we said as well, that when we transmute that energy, we create the solar man. But when we fornicate, what we create is a bestial mind. And that we said, Cain is the origin of the mind that we have. Cain is the mind nourished by lust. And that's why Jesus, when referring to the people of uh, the, at that time, 2,000 years ago, he said, you are children of the devil. Talking about fornication. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who is that that killed from the beginning? It was not Cain. So in other words, he's saying now that we are children of Cain. And Cain is the root in us of the sinful mind that we have. And that's why he says that that Cain is the same serpent. <coughs> the book of Sohar. Paul is very explicit that. That Cain is our mind, which is the first outcome of fornication, and that's the, the seed of the serpent. And that's why when the man and the woman committed the mistake of fornicating like the beasts, he says to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. The field is Yasad. So we are cursed, in other words, because the activity of that sexual force that goes out through fornication. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of your life. I already explained that. And here comes the other thing. It's God the one that's talking here. He's talking to the serpent. He says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman. Who is the woman? The woman is a sexual organ. When we utilize it in the right way. And you is a serpent, which is the serpent of fornication. In other words, who puts enmity? Between the seed of God and between the seed of the fallen serpent. The adversary. Or the adversary. What is that right? The adversary who is Satan. In other words, and I will put Satan between you. Your seed and her seed. 
So that Satan is inside of us. Between the seed of the serpent, which is the fallen serpent, which is Cain. And all the generations after Cain, which are inside of us. And the generation of the woman is that woman that follows the path of sanctity. Is that initiate that enters into the path and takes care of the sexual force. Because the woman, which is the Shekinah, rises when we enter into chastity. That Kundalini becomes an activity. And that the seed of the woman. And that seed of the woman, the first seed of the woman is called Habel or Abel. That's the first seed, which is positive. But Cain is stronger because Cain is the son of the fallen serpent. It's inside of us. It's the ego, in other words. That what we call my pride, my vanity, my laziness, my lust. All of that is seed of Cain, of the serpent. And it's an enmity with us. When we enter into this path, we want to make light in the darkness, right? We want to awake our Shekinah. And Satan is there. Inside of us. Testing us. Because of your fault, said Satan, you utilize your sexual force in the wrong way. Now, my seed, the serpent, fallen serpent, is this, all of this filthiness that you have here. Your lust comes out of me. Anger, pride, laziness, gluttony, all of that is a seed of the serpent. When you enter into this path, you want to act uprightly, perfect. You want to follow the commandments of God. Meanwhile, the enemy is inside of you. Because God put that enmity there in order for to show you the mistake that you made. And Satan is that enmity. Every time that you want to do something perfect, you want to do chastity, Satan appears within you and says, look at that woman. Do you like her? Or if you are a woman, say, look, that man is that handsome. I, I, I shouldn't sin because I am following the path of God. I have to be perfect, chaste. And then Satan says, forget about that. And push your lust inside of us. Who is his seed inside of us? And then we start at the end following his seed. And we are in enmity all the time. When we are on this path, there is an enmity. But if we follow, he says, you know, the right thing, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. Which is called Judas, Pilate, and Caiaphas inside of us. Pilate, the demon of the mind that washes his hand, always justifying. No, no, I'm just watching this pornography, pornography, or reading this because I have to know myself, you know. This is how justify Pilate justify washing his hands always. I'm just here. <clears throat> I just want to try to be perfect. And Judas is in the sex. He just betrays the Lord completely. Committing adultery directly. Selling his Lord for mundane things. All the power of the energy that we have in sex in the motor center, we utilize it for what? Because in the motor center we have that activity in order to make more money. We got to be rich. In order to be successful in this life. So Judas push you. Sell your Lord. Forget about that. You have to be successful here in this earth. Forget about the kingdom of heaven. Because Judas wanted Jesus to be president. The king of Israel. But Jesus says no. My kingdom is not from this world. And he was discouraged because of that. Because he wanted to have a strong army in this world. That these are Judas. 
And Caiaphas? Caiaphas hate the Lord. It's the evil will in our heart. Hmm? Caiaphas is that desire that we always satisfy every time. We know that we are doing the wrong thing, but we don't care. Oh, we shouldn't do this because according to the law of God, according to the scriptures, according to the path that I'm following, but anyhow, I'm going to do it because I need to do it. I mean, he doesn't care. It's evil will, self-willed. So these three traitors, Judas, Pilate, and Caiaphas, are inside of us. And that's why he's there. Satan controls them. You create them, now you have to defeat them. And in order to defeat them, I have to tempt you in order to show you how they act through you. If you defeat me, then you will be crucified and resurrect. But not all of us, you know, pass the, the test. That's why it is written <coughs> that when Jesus was going to pass your deals in order to defeat Satan, Satan enters into Peter. Oh my Lord, don't go through that ordeal. That's painful. This is how it's written here. In the Gospel of Matthew. And Jesus turns to Peter and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou subsavest not the things that be of God, but the dust, those that ask of men. Hmm? So in the path, we always find that Peter inside of us and outside of us. And says, hey, don't do that. This is too painful. But Jesus says clear to Peter, don't tempt me. I want the things of God, not the things of men. So the things of men are dust. And Satan feed itself with the dust of the earth. With us. That dust, in other words, is all of that that we have within. Defects, vices, errors. So we have to defeat that in order to defeat Satan. We can't comprehend the ego and annihilate our defects and vices. In order to triumph in this path. But we will never eliminate Satan. Because Satan is the opposite aspect of God. And Satan is inside of us. Because God needs him. In order for us to be tempted. As he tempted Jesus. His own Satan tempted him. Now in other symbols. Satan is always symbolized by the mind. In other words, in the mind is where we have the throne of Satan or the den of Satan. He utilizes the mind in order to tempt us. Remember that it's Cain. So, <clears throat> in other words, in synthesis, before we were like Christus Lucifer, like Adam in the Garden of Eden, enjoying all the powers that God granted unto us in order to command the whole earth. But when we committed the mistake of fornication, we went out of Eden, out of Shamajim, out of heaven, and fell into the ground. And now we are the dust of the earth. And that Satan inside of us is feeding itself with that dust that we created. Our mission is, of course, to rise the fallen serpent and to eliminate the ego. But without the help of Satan, it's impossible. We cannot do it. You know, there is a word <coughs> in Hebrew which is called 
Veshat. You put here the letter Vav and you put Veshat. That means esophagus. Esophagus. You know, you put all what you eat there. When you eat in the wrong way, that letter Vav elongates at the end and makes it makes letter Nun final Nun. Many times we said that the letter Vav and letter Nun are the same letter. Elongates the esophagus because you are glutton, you are eating in the wrong way. So that is your Shetan, Satan. And that's why it's written, you shall not eat. Meaning use your Veshat in your own way, in the wrong way, all of this. And this Veshat or esophagus begins from the larynx. Because here is the tree of good and evil, that to give us knowledge. That's the fruit, because the very roots are in the sex. So here are the fruits in the throat, and the roots of the tree of good and evil are in the sex. So when Adam and Eve took from the fruit, he put it in their veshat, in their throat, in their esophagus. And this is how it is written symbolically that they ate. And when they did that, they engulfed themselves with the fruit. And the letter Vav turns into the end Vav, I mean Nun, and instead of Veshat became Shatan. And since that moment, we engulf ourselves with desire. And from here comes out. Because we ate it, and now comes out everything that is the outcome of that action. That's why the Master Jesus says, it doesn't hurt what you put in your mouth, but when you, what, what that becomes out of it. If you don't digest that you eat, what comes out of it is just defects, vices, errors that we have to control from inside. Because that Shatan pushes from inside all the egos that relate with degeneration in order for us to be tempted by the devil. This is how Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. It's not like you think, but from outside, from his own mind, his own egos at that time, were tempting him. Satan was pushing them. But Jesus was triumphant. He defeated Satan. In the same way, we had to be tested. We had to be tempted. Are we, uh, are we going to be triumphant as Jesus? We have the same forces, the same elements, the same fires that Jesus had and became triumphant. The same elements are inside of us. If we follow his example, of course, we will be triumphant. But it's not by reading or memorizing the Bible that you are going to follow his example. It's by overcoming the temptations of Satan, or Satan, which are inside of us. Not outside. It's in your mind, it's in your heart, it's in your sex. The three traitors. And it's darkness. And that is temptation. If we defeat it, we make light in the darkness. That is precisely the mystery of the sat Satanians, of the Middle Ages, in which they were not condemning or damning, damning Satan, because they understood that Satan was the shadow of God. And how those the shadow of God is, uh, are going to be condemned or we are going to send them to hell and to uh, blaspheme against that shadow? 
when that shadow accomplishes his, his, his duty, then God absorbs it because he is his own shadow. And then the star of David in the right hand of that initiate appears as triumphant. The star of David means I triumphed against the enemy, which is my, the, the shadow of my own God. And that's why I'm now shining. This is what Jesus did. He defeated Lucifer, Satan, in other words. Did you understand? Did you follow that? Do you have questions? Ask. Yeah? Can you tell more about um, uh, the aspects when someone has the tunnel of fire on the top of their head? The of fire. The question is when the tunnel of fire appears on top of the head? Yes. Yeah. Well, that is when somebody knows the mystery of the, of the fires that we are talking here. Ish and Isha. The male fire and the female fire, which are related with the caduceus of Mercury. The male fire is in the right, the female fire is in the left. And they are united in Yesod. When they are united in Yesod, then the fire rises and appears in the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, which is Bina, the pinion of land. And that fire goes into the atmosphere and is like a tongue of fire. That appears seven times because the true man has seven bodies. The first tongue that appears on top of the head is a tongue of fire related with the physical body. It is when the glory of God, the Shekinah, has risen from the Muladhara Chakra, which is called the earth, in the medulla, to the top of the head. Of course, we had to rise that Shekinah seven times, or seven Kundalinis. We had to reach seven tongues of fire. Well, the, that tongue of fire rises and shines, which is the Shekinah. Actually, I told you in other lectures that that's why in many religions they use the turban or the kippah or the hat in order to hide for the clairvoyant eye that Shekinah or that flame or tongue of fire, which is the outcome of chastity. Of course, that tongue of fire, in order for it to be shown here on top of the head, you need to rise the fire 33 degrees, 33 vertebrae, which is the symbol of the, three, of the 33 years of the of Master Jesus. But of course, if you remember the lecture about Zayin, we explained there that Zayin, which is the fallen serpent, is related with the tongue, is related with the sword. So when that flame rises and reaches the top of the head, it's because we are reaching chastity. It is because Mary Magdalene is no longer a prostitute. She became a saint in us, you know, because related with this symbol of alchemy, Mary Magdalene is that fallen serpent, a fallen woman. It represents all of us that use the sexual organ in the wrong way. But when we use, start using it in the, in the right way, that prostitute disappears and becomes a chaste woman inside of us. And the proof is when that tongue of fire appears on top of the head. That means a chaste person in all the levels of understanding, it means be now. Yes? <coughs> well, we're talking, the question is about the temptation or test. 
that Satan put on us all the time. Satan, I mean, his main temptation is in sex. That's the main thing. That's why it is written, if we triumph in sexual temptation, we triumph of any temptation. But we don't have to put our weapons down, you know, because also Satan knows that he could put you down through alcohol. Or through pride as well. Satan can tell you, as, as you see there, for instance, in the Bible, that sometimes the apostles, or Judas in this case, is saying, hey, they're going to proclaim you a king of Israel, president of this nation. And Jesus rejects that, because that related with pride. So in this path, when you enter into this path, Satan, your mind, will tell you, hey, pff, you can be uh, proclaimed here, master, and you will be famous, and people will worship you. Why don't you utter your name? Say it. You will see. And I will give you all the kingdoms of the earth. This is what the mind said to you. And well, most of them, they fall, and then the pride. And after that, they said, oh, I am such and such reincarnation. And then they fell in that. And Satan starts feeding the mind through pride. That way through alcohol. Many initiates fell because of alcohol. Because alcohol resuscitates the egos that we are comprehending or annihilating. But in which way you were tempted or tested? Just by knowing where the liquor store is? Oh, you gave the, the person the, the address. Well, that is using uh, uh, your, the virtue of being, how you call, uh, courteous with a person in the wrong way. Because Satan uses virtues also in the wrong way. This is something very important, you see. Satan, some virtuous persons, Satan, when there is no defects, then Satan enters and uses the virtues in their own way. And many people that use their own virtues in their own way. To be courteous, they say, hey, can you tell me, please, what is this bar here? I said, oh, I don't know, really, I'm sorry. But if you indicate that, oh, yeah, it's around this, and the guy is going to get drunk. So you are pushing him, helping him to go and get drunk. You're right? So, of course, in that case, we will say that you allowed your own mind to use a virtue in their own way. So we have to know how to use virtues. As we said in the lecture, not to give alms to a drug addict. Because to give to those that need is good. But if you don't know when you're giving money to some beggar, that that is going to be used for drugs, then Satan is using your own virtue in the wrong way. And you think, I'm doing good. No, you are worshiping Satan. The shadow is overpowering you. You see? So Satan is always a good fellow that will act against you all the time to force you to develop right virtues and to force you to use them in the right way. When you triumph over him, Behold Job. Read the book of Job in the very beginning. You see how Satan is doing the commands of Jehovah and is putting Job to test. He says, oh, yeah, he is worshiping you because you gave him a lot. You take everything that he has, he will blaspheme against your face. And Satan said, okay, take everything that he has, but don't touch him. And Satan comes down and takes everything from Job and under the command of God. And at the end, Job kneels and says, Well, naked I leave the womb of my mother, and naked I will return. And God gave me a good things, very good things. So also these bad things that I am listening and hearing through all my people, all the servants that are telling me all these calamities. So, 
Let the name of Jehovah be holy forever. So he is defeating Satan. He is using the virtues in the right way. But what is what uh, common and ordinary people do when they are passing terrible ordeals? They said, oh God, why are you doing this for me? <laughs> right? And they blame God about that. And then Satan says, oh yes, I trumped here. This unfortunately is what happened to us. And for that, that's why we need meditation. Analysis, comprehension. Do you have any other question? Yeah. Is Lucifer the tempter different than the ego? Does he tempt through the ego or is Lucifer the ego? No, Lucifer is not the ego. Satan is the fallen Lucifer, of course. <clears throat> but he's not the ego. But the ego is satanic because it is the outcome of the fall or the wrong use of that force, which is called Lucifer. So if we defeat the ego, we are defeating Satan. But at the end, when we are clean of any defect, vice, and error, Satan is there. So I said, well, what, what can I do now? The, this fellow, they fit me in many ways. So he talks with God. I said, okay, your job is done. He is perfect. Come and he absorbs him. And then Satan returns into the same source because in the end, he is he. He's a shadow. And the sun, which is the soul, becomes, as well, thanks to Satan, I defeated all my egos, and I am coming now with more light. But you have to be always careful, because that shadow is inside of us. It's always there. If God wants to see if you are strong, he sends Satan. This is what happened, for instance, with Master Samael on the or in the beginning of this root race. He was perfect already. A Christus Lucifer. Adam into the image of God. And for him was prohibited the sexual act. Because it's not necessary for a Christus Lucifer or Adam to have sexual act. Unless it's under the command of God. But he became in love with a beautiful woman, he said, and he knew. He couldn't touch her. But anyhow, he fell in love and took her in a sexual act. And when he took her in a sexual act, and then the shadow of God entered into action. Oh, somebody is calling me. I had nothing to do, but now I'm seeing that I'm pulling down from the heights. And then Satan descends and says, oh, he wants to do the sexual act. Let me help him. Hmm? And he helped him. And he fornicated and fell. You see? This is what happened. Because God always gives freedom to us. And he frees his own Satan, his own shadow, in order to do what we have to do. Well, the thing is, when we obey, <coughs> and God said, take her, I command you, I, w I am with you. But if you take it by your own choice, by your own will, and don't remember God, Satan is there, because God always knows everything. He says, doesn't want me to be there, but my shadow will be with him. And I will put enmity between his seed and her seed. And then the, the whole story repeats again for the fallen angel. Well, what happened, what happened with Samael? He fell in love with the woman. Of course, the thing is that that woman was another initiate as well. And it was beautiful. Both of them were standing. Both of them are prohibited to do the sexual act. And both of them decided to do it. Both of them fell. 
for disobedience. Because it's written in the resurrected master, they shouldn't do the sexual act. And now, in order to rise again to the same level, we had to do it through the sexual act. By, by defeating Lucifer. Because Lucifer, or Satan, in other words, is the one that gives us the sexual strength. And it's act through the seed. Remember that it's written, I, put, I will put enmity between your seed and her seed. So that is the duality inside of us. Every time that we want to do the sexual act, he is there. If we fornicate, I say, oh well, more creatures for me. More seed, more children, offspring. And the woman says, when I'm going to have my offspring? So when you start in this path and transmuting your sexual force, then the woman is having the child of God inside of you. But the seed of Satan is there in order to fight against that. And who created that? You. That's why the Master says, Lucifer is a golden friend. He's a dragon. If we defeat him, then we become an archangel, like Michael. But, uh, unfortunately, there is no Michaels here, right? When you say that, uh, I'm sorry, when the uh, Master Samaritan world said that the song wants to create a real man, um, it's, it's testing, it's, it's a, this is a, uh, a testing lab, this earth right here. Hmm. Is he talking about Tifereth or, or um, Kether? No. When he says that the sun is making a great experiment here in order to create solar man, he's talking about the angels of ore. That's the light, the abstract light, the hidden sun in the seventh dimension that descends and makes nest in Malkut, the physical body. So that light wants to create solar man. So descends from there, but projects his shadow in order to make the work. And the evening and the morning one day, and the evening and the morning the second day, and the evening and the morning the third day. So between them, they're creating the solar man, right? But every day is really a fight, a battle that we have to do between light and darkness inside of us. And that's precisely the outcome is precisely in the sixth day. And the sixth day when it says, let us now create the man into our own image, the solar man is... You know, a, a solar man is a Tosoma Heliacon. The solar man shining like the sun. That is the Lucifer, right? But it can be in danger of losing that light if he doesn't know how to control the evening. For us, as men, the evening is a woman. But for the woman, her evening is the man. But it's more danger for us. Because we are active and the woman is passive. The Master Samael said, For me, he says, all women are snakes from the abyss. Only my wife, he says. It's true. But uh, all of us think that all women are angels from heaven. And then we are just fascinated with a female, a female uh, body, and then we are just oh, all men, fornicating. And now women also are enticed with men, the problem. Because that lure, that light that gives us beauty to the woman and beauty to, to the man is called the sexual fire, Ishan Isha. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. 
You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.